वेलकम टू एवरीवन दिस इज राकिबुल इस्लाम आई एम राइट अप कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ कोस्टल रिसर्च यूनिट वेलकम अगेन टू आवर स्पेशल वेबिनार टाइटल मेडाइन फिश हिल शाय एंड इट्स सोशियो इकोलॉजिकल सिग्निफिकेंस फॉर बांग्लादेश फॉर बांग्लादेश ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय कोस्टल रिसर्च यूनिट एज यू नो कोस्टल रिसर्च यूनिट राकिब फुल स्क्रीन पर शेयर दो well uh, sorry for the inconvenience i am starting from the beginning again hello everyone this is rakibul islam i am write up coordinator of coastal research unit welcome to our tonight's webinar marine titled marine fish hilsha and its socio ecological significance for bangladesh organized by coastal research research unit as you may know coastal research unit is a research group working under the leadership of dr mohammad shohidul islam sir the aim of this unit is to disseminate knowledge of coast, uh, dynamic coastal system and to achieve this goal we organize seminars conduct research work arrange weekly meeting and publish newsletter without further ado i would like to introduce tonight's key speaker he is none other than our very own dr naimul nasser sir and this webinar will be chaired by dr mohammad shohidul islam sir professor of department of geography and environment university of dhaka first of all let's meet our key speaker professor nasser has completed his bachelor and master's degree from uh, department of geology uh, university of dhaka and he achieved his phd degree from uh, dalhousie university on a specialization of uh, fisheries and aquaculture from canada uh, his professional career begins with uh, as as scientific officer uh, in bangladesh fisheries research institute later on in 1991 uh, 1991 uh, he uh, joined as a lecturer in department of geology and now he is heading the uh, heading the uh, uh, heading uh, uh, heading the department as its chairman in university of dhaka besides he holds various uh, he holds position in various social uh, social and environmental organization uh, he is a fellow uh, he is a fellow of geological society and coordinator of dhaka university nature conservation club his research interest encompasses aquatic ecology fisheries biology and conservation biology he has more than 200 publication to his credit uh, credit in this in these related fields he conducted various research project on climate change hilsha fisheries cholera bacterium ecology and fish farming he worked with oxford universities oxford university john hopkin university world bank united nation unicef and many more national and international agencies his work on transboundary hilsha fish management is followed by all the stakeholders in bangladesh and west bengal in india his book his books and book chapter are published in very uh, in home and abroad so we are very very much honored and delighted to have dr naimul nasser sir with us in this webinar i am looking forward to learn a great deal from this webinar and i hope this is true for all of us here in this joining in this webinar and now i would like to thank all the uh, uh, all the guests and participants here in this webinar joining today uh, to uh, make it successful thank you everyone now i would like to uh, request dr mohammad shohidul islam sir to take this session forward thank you everyone once again thank you very much rocky bol so i think the most of the participants here are from uh, is bengal bangla speaking so it could be a bilingual seminar or webinar you can speak either bengali or english doesn't matter so i again welcome all of you to this uh, seminar apnader ke bolche amader ekhane ekta ekta housekeeping notice ache amra eta chai apnara shobai ekta strictly follow korben please keep apnader protteker camera ebong audio video dui ta ke apnara mute rakhben bondho rakhben प्रश्न रखते हैं 
who is one of the leading uh, scientists on his area, on his field in the country. Uh, you have already learned it from our uh, moderator today, tonight. Anyway, so without further delay, I'm, I'm requesting Niamun Nasir to present his talk. And uh, uh, after his presentation, after his presentation, there will be open discussion. You can join the discussion. I mean, the camera open the capacity, please, up not up another camera take a bondo for them. I'm your man, Mijeta Bondo Kursi. And Nasir, it's up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am asking the Vice President of the Basically, I am asking you to know about our country's Elish management. What is the state of Elish? I am Bangladesh. I am talking about Bangladesh. Our topic is the marine fish of fish, fish and its socio-ecological significance for Bangladesh. I am talking about the Bangladesh Elish Shampad. और समुद्र निर्भर समाज अर्थनीति ऊपरे हमें ये तो कथा बोल तो आसे कथा बोला शुरू ते अमी फिर उठ जाच्छी एक तो छोटे डॉक्यूमेंट्री ते देखा ने जेटा दिए आम्रा आमादे इलिशे चमोंदे गवेषणा जात्रा शुरू है चला अपना शो के लिए आसे कुछ टेन जाए कोर्ट तो नेहमन नास नासेर को ना साउंड होच्छ ना साउंड एक ना व्यवस्था से की साउंड साउंड पावा जाच्छ ना साउंड होच्छ ना शुद्ध देखा जाच्छ ओ ना ना साउंड तो होच्छ अच्छा आमारे क्या तो साउंड रहते अलग क्या हो बे आम्रा सुनते बात ची ना ओ इतना की करा था लो साउंड ट्रिय करा जावे इकन इकन तो हंड्रेड परसेंट टच्चे ताले की एक तो नया बोला जाए जब जखम जेटा होते हैं उटा बोल ली दिली है तो हम लोग उस तरफ बोलते हैं सर सर जब दी हेडफोन डॉप करें सर आपने अब आमर आमर हेडफोन डॉप करा है सर आपने आज आमर हेडफोन था ना अच्छा 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 मतलब सिस्टम साउंड हम रहे कौन सॉन्ग पच्चीने
আমরা দেখতে পারবেন সেখানে বাংলাদেশের যে ইলিশ বাংলাদেশ এবং ভারতের যে ইলিশ সেই ইলিশটা আসলে আমরা আমরা যখন আমি বারবার রিকোয়েস্ট করছি সমান তোমার ক্যামেরা বন্ধ করো ক্যামেরা এবং এটা আমি আজকে যে ওইখানে আসলে ডকুমেন্টারিতে যেটা ছিল যে ইলিশের দুই দেশের যে সমস্যাগুলো সেই সমস্যাগুলোকে ওখানে একত্রিভূত করে দেখানো হয়েছিল আর যেটি ছিল যে এই সমস্যাটা আসলে ইলিশের উৎপাদনটা যখন কমে যায় তারপরে আসলে দুই দেশ নড়েচড়ে বসে এবং ইলিশের ম্যানেজমেন্ট প্ল্যান নিয়ে এগুতে থাকে বেসিক্যালি বাংলাদেশ এই সম্পদ যখন আমাদের কমে যায় তখন কিভাবে আমরা এগুলাম এবং কিভাবে আমরা আমাদের ইলিশকে ফিরে পেলাম সেই গল্পটা আমি আজকে আপনাদের কাছে করবো বেসিক্যালি যে আমরা যে কথা সম্বন্ধে আলোচনা করছি বেসিক্যালি ইলিশ ইলিশ হচ্ছে সমুদ্রের এক ধরনের মাছ এবং সেটা কিন্তু আমরা আসলে সুনীল অর্থনীতি বা ব্লু ইকোনমি নিয়ে যেটা আমরা কথা বলি তারই কিন্তু অংশ এখানে যদি আমরা কথা বলতে চাই যে সুনীল অর্থনীতি সেটাতে কিন্তু সমুদ্রের যদি কথা আমরা ধরার চেষ্টা করি তাহলে যেটা দেখা যায় যে সমুদ্রের অনেক জীব বৈচিত্র্য থাকে এবং সেইটা বিভিন্ন প্রতিবেশের মধ্যে সেই জীব বৈচিত্র্য গুলা লুকাইতে থাকে বা ছড়ানো থাকে এবং সেই ছড়ানো প্রতিবেশের উপরে বেচ করেই কিন্তু সুনীল অর্থনীতিটাকে কিন্তু আমরা গোছাতে পারি এবং এই মৎস্য প্রজাতির প্রকার মৎস্য সম্পদের মাছ ম্যানগ্রোভ বন মেরিকালচার সি র্যাঞ্চিং মেরিন বায়োটেকনোলজি ট্যুরিজম তেল ও গ্যাস ও যোগাযোগ ব্যবস্থা বাণিজ্য এই সবগুলো মিলেই কিন্তু সমুদ্রের মধ্যে সুনীল অর্থনীতি আবর্তিত এর মধ্যে লুকিয়ে আছে আমাদের ইলিশ সম্পদ বঙ্গোপসাগরের কথা যদি আমরা দেখি তাহলে আমরা দেখতে পাব আমাদের মোটা দাগে এখানে চারটা আমাদের মৎস্য চারণ ভূমি আছে এখানে কিন্তু মৎস্য ধরে আর কি মাছ ধরার মৎস্য ক্ষেত্র আছে সোয়াচ অফ নো গ্রাম যেটা সুন্দরবনের নিচে অবস্থিত ভারত বাংলাদেশ ভারতের বর্ডার এই বরাবর সোয়াচের পাশ দিয়ে আর আছে কক্সবাজারের কাছে যেটাকে বলা হয় সাউথ প্যাচেস আর একটু সাউথ অফ সাউথ প্যাচেস আর একটু গভীর সমুদ্রের দিকে সেন্ট মার্টিনের পরে আর এই দুইটি অংশে সোয়াচ এবং এর মাঝামাঝি একটা অংশ আছে যেটা মিডিল গ্রাউন্ড বলে ইলিশ সাধারণত আমরা দেখতে পাই যে এই সোয়াচ অফ নো গ্রাউন্ডে ইলিশের আধিক্ষটাই সবচেয়ে বেশি থাকে আর এইখানে যে সাউথ প্যাচেস এই অংশগুলোর মধ্যেও কিন্তু ইলিশের বিস্তৃত থাকে এটা কিন্তু এই দিকে কিন্তু আমরা মিডিল গ্রাউন্ড বা এখানে কিন্তু আমরা আসলে অন্য ধরনের এই সাউথ অফ সাউথ প্যাচে ইলিশ আছে বাইরে থেকে Okay, I can talk in English, no problem. So basically in Bangladesh, we have four fishing zones, a fishing area, and of which uh, some of the area which is close to Sundarban, as well as the Coxal Brother, those places are very much important for hillshire fishery. Um, sorry again, the Bengali here, 
Uh, the elish is a national fish and it has recently taught the geographical index that when you talk about the Bangladeshi fish, that is from Bangladesh. So that is a geographical index we see. And uh, in the very last, in 2018-19 uh, Bangladesh uh, statistics, uh, the Hinsha, it contributes 12.15% of total fishery from, uh, from of our country, uh, and which uh, is about uh, uh, about uh, uh, five five lakh five point three lakh metric ton. So basically, uh, there are five lakh people. They are directly related in the coastal area. They are directly related to the hillshire fisheries, and indirectly in the value chain. Uh, in total, twenty five lakh people are involved, and hillshire contributed about 1%, 1.24, but 25% of our GDP. It also uh, helps in our nutrition and nutritional security, uh, as well as it is a, a good, it is a source of uh, economic security. And in a, in a way that in the Israeli, it is, uh, we have about 22 to 23,000 crore taka, uh, 22 to 50 crore taka of our uh, of money, uh, of, of money uh, that is that belongs that, that that is the value of the recent uh, uh, harvesting data. So it's a huge amount of money uh, only from Hilsha and. Uh, nevertheless, the 60 to 70 percent hilsha of the world catch from uh, catch in Bangladesh territory. Hilsha is one of the clupid fish. They are uh, so these are the different types of uh, uh, fishes from the same group, uh, and they are herrings, they are they are clupids, they are they are sardines. They all belongs to the hilsha. Basically, they live in the marine water, except this one. This is called chapila fish from in Bangladesh. And they live in the fresh water. But other than that, most of the fish, they live in the coastal area, as well as in the, in, in the saline water environment. And of which Hilsha alone and some other small fish, um, uh, they uh, usually um, uh, migrate to the freshwater to breed. So, if you look into the distribution of hilsha, there it has the hilsha, especially the species that I'm talking about, the Tenlurusa elisha. It has a wide range of distribution. It's not only found in Bay of Bengal uh, of Bangladesh. It is also found in, in, in Indian, is Eastern, Eastern and Western Indian part from Vaisang Bhaisakapattam to Madras, as well as in the other part of, uh, uh, of the Hyderabad from the rivers they migrated in. And in Sindh, in Pakistan, as well as in, in Kuwait, uh, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea in Kuwait, uh, from where it migrates towards the Iran as well as the uh, as well as the Iraq uh, water bodies. So it is a very much um, a well distributed fish, but the majority of fish usually it lives in the Bay of Bengal or caught from the Bay of Bengal. This is the life cycle of hilsha. Uh, as you see that uh, when a fish, the the hilsha come, uh, so it has a three life style. Uh, I would say three ecological lifestyle. One is in the Bay of Bengal, in the sea. They migrate, come up to the uh, coastal area, in the semi-saline area, and then totally the freshwater area to breed. So, but they breed in the very much fresh water 
uh, in, in, in the river system, though they have egg in the sea, but they don't breed in the sea. And then the fish hatch and nurse in the, in the, in the fresh water, and then they become a little bigger for within four to six months, then they again start to move. The, the baby, baby hills are we call Chatka or in the Koka Elish, they easily move towards the Bay of Bengal after six months of age. So from six months of age, six to eight months of age, they, they started to, they become saline uh, living fish. And from where they grew up within 12 months, they grew up to, uh, to a site to get fecund and then they may come back to the fresh water to breed. But we expect for the managemental purpose, we expecting the larger fish to come to breed, to have more spawn or more fish in the river uh, for recruitment. So this is uh, in a broad sense, you can see the life cycle. So this is the fishery. When we think about the fishery, this is in the very coastal place, close to the sea. They, when they migrate, they are, they are caught in the large scale. They are, they, are, they are stacked in the different size group. They're sold, they're, going in, they're in the retail market and they're in the retailer shop, wholesale market to retailer shop. And then they are brought home and having a different types of curry or, or food for our delicacy. So from the from the very beginning, the uh, it was a it was a back data in 2007. We found that the, the overall, if we think about 100 person to the in in the in the end of the uh, uh, channel, only 30 percent of the cost, 30 uh, 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 percent of the benefit is uh, going to the fisherman, whereas the middle uh, middle man get the 70 percent and the wholesale usually have a 20 percent more to pay uh, to to get the benefit whereas the the outward customer usually pay uh, 10 to 20 percent in the in the retail shop so my understanding my work started in 2005 while i was working in the in the pot the multi-purpose bridge uh, environmental impact assessment. And that was my first encounter with, uh, with, the, uh, with, with, with the feasibility study because it was one of the requirement that I have to look for the Hilsha migration route as well as the Hilsha fishery impact on the Hilsha fishery if the bridge will be, uh, uh, will be constructed in the Mawa area. After that, uh, I was involved in 2011. I was involved uh, with the Bang Indo Bangla, Bangladesh and India, uh, a joint research group where we, we studied uh, and, uh, and do some very vital research uh, between the two countries uh, on, on, on the HFA series. One of the outcomes that you can get in the, into, the, uh, into the website uh, is this, the migration spawning pattern and conservation of Hitchasat in Bangladesh and India. This is one of the very first uh, book, I would say, and a document that was uh, published in 2014 uh, uh, on, on, on the Hilsha from the both countries. Usually it was only from one country or other, but this is a combined effort that we made over there. And very recently in 2018, we published uh, uh, doc, uh, the, the whole genome of Tenuelosa Hilisha from the river Padda, that was a very famous uh, river for Hilsha. Uh, that, was the, that was one that was done. So we have sample from different environments, but we published this Tenuelosa Hilsha, uh, a whole genome of Tenuelosa Hilisha from Padda. So what we're doing right now, we are doing some more other work to uh, to understanding the genomic or the genomic complexity of the fish uh, uh, nowadays. And interestingly, that from, the, from this joint research, uh, the West Bengal government in 4th April 2014 
uh, with the experience of Bangladeshi experience and the joint research that uh, the, they published the Hilsha Conservation uh, Rules. And it is one of the leaflet that was uh, that uh, I came across when I was working in the West Bengal uh, with uh, fishery officers. And they're the one. And you can get the uh, gadget in the website. Yeah, in the, in the in India, but let's come back to the original story. Why? What we did? Uh, why? The, how the whole conservation issues were done? So in two thousand one and two, uh, there was you can see here. This is the normal uh, normal graph of the production of Hilsha, but in two thousand one and two. There was a sudden fall of Hilsha production in Bangladesh, and uh, and in 2002 and three, uh, it was 2.9 percent uh, production loss uh, from the previous uh, year, and then the government started to uh, think about how to improve the fish or fishery Hilsha fishery in Bangladesh. So to, in 2003 and four. Uh, only the small hilsha or the jatka, baby hilsha, or juvenile hilsha, that the jatka hilsha was uh, was banned, and uh, and then uh, it it looks like that for fifteen point nine eight percent of fish production increased than the previous year, but um, later on in two thousand five and six, uh, beside the uh, juvenile hilsha uh, banning. Uh, several uh, sanctuary was established, and it created it is improved the twenty five percent, twenty five point six three percent of uh, increase of the hilsha at the time. So that is also another improvement comes up, or it's a boost up. And then in two thousand seven and eight, another one that uh, not to catch beside those jatka. Uh, con uh, uh, Jatka, prohibition of Jatka fishing and sanctuary. Uh, Bangladesh government introduced the, the ban of, for, that was 11 days at the beginning, ban of uh, brute fish. That is the mother in or the, or the or the parent in or brute fish, not to catch the brute fish for 11 days. Now it is 22 days. And it helps in improve, boost up the production in 31.46%. So gradually, uh, now uh, in the very last data that I found in 2011 and 12, with all this effort, the production is, is almost about 57.08%. Uh, and from 2015, uh, we have 65 days fish ban in the sea any kind of fishing in the sea. So it is now going on 20, 20th May to 23rd July. It's going on right now. And that is also helping in improving the production of Hilsha as well as the other fish in, in, the, in the sea, as well as in the river system. Some of the picture that we took at the time, the, this is the small boat, that the fishing boat. And then this is the net, illegal net they're using. That is current gel, they say. Some of the current gel was caught. Government is only catch up this one. And, and then uh, they burn it out. The Coast Guard, the, the government, as this is one of the gill net. Current gel is one kind of gill net. So these are caught. And then all the illegal fish, a small fish was caught. And they were just trashed out uh, to, to control the illegal catch of the small size fish. And this is the fishing thing. You can see these are just the baby one. And it was very unfortunate the tons and ton of Jatka was also caught at the time. Now the situation has been changed. So uh, what, what is on Jatka? Uh, Jatka, is, uh, Jatka is the fish which is ten, uh, smaller or lesser than 10 in size, the hill shark. and uh, the another one is the, uh, the the size of the mesh for the uh, yeah, for the net is 4.5 centimeter, and whereas the other one that the the some of the illegal like the gill net like current gel they say, 
uh, 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 nobody can sell it or nobody can distribute it. In the, that's another, uh, uh, you know, uh, rules or uh, decree that was made by the government. And some of the uh, century, we have five centuries in, in the country and you, you cannot fish over there. So these are the uh, Hilsha century, uh, which is about 8,000 square kilometer. And we have six at present, this is the very recent one, the Meghna uh, River, Hisla, the Mehnigans. And these are the five was established earlier. And now the government has declared another one in the Meghna, uh, Meghna River, the Hisla, Mehnigans. So where the fish was totally fishing of Hilsha, as well, especially the juvenile one, uh, uh, from first March to 30th April is in, in place. You can see the different one in Andamanik River, which is close to the uh, sea, uh, which is first November to 31st January. What happens? All the fish usually after this time, after April or April, May, June, they usually, uh, this is the, the nursing time in the other river. But they started to migrate towards the sea. So usually they uh, aggregate in the uh, close to the Andermanic rivers and so. So at that time, the first November to 31st January, the whole fishing was stopped. So this is the map. You can see this is the century one. Uh, this is the fifth century two, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and the sixth one is uh, uh, very much close over here, over here. So this is not uh, signed up over there. Some of the activities you can see, is, uh, I've taken it from the fisheries department they, and, and the world fish as well as the one. So the people was given uh, different kind of support uh, 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 in, in terms of money, in terms of you know sewing machine or or goat uh, or van for alternate livelihoods, the lady was given the real actual uh, the legal types of uh, legal types of uh, net and the tractors as well as some some money to uh, to set up a small uh, uh, shop. So all that I was uh, showing you is, uh, is the types of management. So this is one kind of social management. Social management is that, that the people, the, the, the registered uh, fishermen where will, be, uh, will be supported with 40 kg of rice uh, during this pan period, especially in the 21 days of pan period. So they don't go to the fish, they don't go for fishing, but they have some food instead and they can mend and they can do other things during these 40 days, uh, 22 days of pan period. So that was the human management. But if we think about the biological management, we, we don't fish, we try to uh, ban on fishing in the very peak breeding period. That was the one. And then, uh, and then we, uh, we try to protect the baby hilsha or the chatka during their nursing in the freshwater river and let them go back to the sea to grow up or get mature and come back again to continue the fishery. So that was the biological management of the fish. So this is some of the data that you can see. Uh, I can sh I, I showed you earlier also from 1999, 2000, towards the 2013 and 14, and then the graph is always high. And you can see in the in the top one is the marine fishing. That is the uh, that is almost double because the main stock is in the sea, so you can get the fish from the sea, uh, which is double than the fish that easily migrate to the river, which is uh, about uh, about half of the fish uh, we, we, we get from the river, uh, 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 you know, during the, during the migration as a fishery. And that was the very, very 
uh, old practice of, of kelcha fishing in this region. We did another uh, um, research during uh, with country uh, during these places that basically the hilsha stock usually in uh, easily uh, stay or easily they are very much you know uh, uh, close down to the Sundarban area. That was one of the theory that uh, one of the lessons that we learned, and usually that is the fishing for both countries. It is beyond Sundarban uh, around this area, but during the migration period, they usually move towards the Meghna estuary or towards the Bhagirathi river uh, estuary. So that is the thing. So uh, usually that's the rainwater or the flow. That is the thing that makes them to move towards the fresh water during this, uh, they move all over uh, every year, uh, uh, all around the year. But that is the peak time uh, they usually choose to move down to the freshwater rivers to breed. But there's some problem uh, that we encountered. So that was the very good story that that was the fish and that is their life cycle in the right. But the problem is the poor or the poverty of the, of the fishers. Though we are talking about the, we are, though we are talking about the life uh, or the conservation of Hilsha, but we have to think about the fishermen or the Hilsha dependent fishermen and their poverty to pop up during the band period. So, their uh, monetary, uh, the monetary help, our food uh, supply, everything is related to the to this poverty. So that is very important. Second one is the complexity of hilsha life cycle. Though we we think about that, okay, there are many fish. They come to the they breed to here, to the freshwater, but we don't. We we do know. We we do not know the details of their life cycle uh, in, in, in this water body. So that is also another important issue. So uh, that need to be, uh, uh, that need to be known. Genetic drift is another problem. Uh, you, uh, I think that uh, two weeks back, there's another nice, pa uh, nice paper that comes up from one of our, uh, colleague from Jagannath University uh, for, from his PhD work, his scientific note, it's, it's, a, it's a scientific, it's, it's a very good journal that most of, there is a very, there is very, uh, there is not much variation in the gene of the stock. So that is very much dangerous. Uh, dangerous means that if there's something wrong in the genetic uh, constituent or any problem, the whole stock will be dropped. So genetic drift is another issue to be think about. So the fish is there. They are uh, here for uh, last thousands and thousands of years in, from the Bay of Bengal, they, they move in and out, but it is the same, it's a small country like Bangladesh, and it's the same gene pool we're talking about. So there's no genetic mixture there's not much genetic mixture in, 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 at the end of the day. And also the talking about the, the we, I call Bipanna, that means the uh, uh, threatened uh, condition. There are lots of other, other one, other pollution is there, the climate is changing and all other unknown issues that could endanger the life of Hilsha from the sea even the overfishing. And in the very last one that I talked about, about the megafauna and, and the marine food cycle and the relationship with the Hilsha. It is also important issue to, to know or to think about. 
we don't know too much about it because I, I, I would see the whales or the sharks or the other animals, megafaunas, they are also dependent. We don't know too much about it on, on the hilsha fish for their survival or their habitat selection in the Bay of Bengal in a particular ecosystem. So we don't know too much this kind of relationship or interrelation, ecological interrelationship in, uh, 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 in, in, the, in the Bay of Bengal in Bangladesh part. So this is uh, one kind of last one that we need to go for SDG goal and this must have some space for Hilsha conservation. So we have to think about the Hilsha conservation on the basis of SDG goal. It needs to be done. And we should have more marine protected area for Hilsha, not only these things. So the recently there's another one that I worked before with IUCN and the government uh, on the MPA in, in, in the Nijam deep area. And that is another good effort that the MPA was is coming up. So that is also another important issue that we, uh, we, we may have, we, we, must, we may have to introduce more marine protected area for Hilsha to conserve or to help these fish to survive in future. There should be a separate Hilsha cell. So for uh, in Bangladesh, because the Hilsha is now presently managed by the government, uh, by the fisheries department, but Hilsha itself a big fishery. Hilsha itself a big issue for, for the blue economy, for people, for socio-ecological aspect. So there should be a separate cell, a combination of researcher, uh, policymaker, uh, or think tank, polit politician, even the fisher, uh, or the, the, the fishing people, or the investor, wholesaler, everybody will be in the same uh, platform to think about the Hilsha. And that is uh, another one that the five years, uh, each, even every five years, we should know the stock of Hilsha uh, in the sea because it is actually evitable. We need to know how much Hilsha is available in the sea, whether we should, we should stop distracting at the present level, or we have to come down, or have to re-study, uh, or have to readjust the fishing effort uh, for, for the survival of the fish. And um, the other one that at the present that there is a big uh, effort uh, on hilsha conservation uh, with uh, that is that is called carrot and uh, stick uh, effort. That uh, if somebody do something wrong, he's uh, he's going for jail. He's he's fine, and if they don't, then he get the carrot. So this easily creates some havoc or some unintentional uh, behavior uh, yeah, among the fishermen in many areas because they easily previously they easily catch fish. Nobody talks about anything, but now they get find, now they get lost in their job, now they get jailed, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to think, or we have to find out some other way, or we have to convert this, uh, this the excess fishermen, or I, I would say, we have, to, we have to divert this fishermen to other job to save the fish in the sea. And this is the one that I already talked about. Uh, I don't want to uh, talk about it again. But the last one that uh, uh, there's some other issues that is not uh, yet looked into. That what about the habitat loss for Hilsha? We don't know too much about it. We don't know about the uh, sparse or our 
are the are the habitat distribution uh, in 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 the in the coastal area or in the sea. We don't know too much, or we don't have any control on the uh, on the uh, river pollution. And there's very little uh, work was done on the climate change and the hills of history. And we have, we have to have that uh, uh, um, we have to have our uh, uh, inter um, inter uh, um, inter and we have to have some uh, relationship or uh, you know transboundary uh, communication between India and Myanmar because we all share the same fish from the Bay of Bengal. So for the benefit of the hillsha fishery, just not only the Bangladesh, we have to share the the under, uh, share and understanding the fish and the fishery from. Bangladesh, India, and Myanmar. So that is a big challenge. So at the end, I see, I see a very beautiful day is coming uh, in one hand that the, uh, if we uh, go forward with a good management plan for Hilsha, and they are protected for us from, from they are protected and uh, from the overfishing as well as uh, the totally stock out. So what happened that if we can manage, manage this fish for future with good governance, the people uh, in future and our next, our future generation can see the hilsha in their plate. So they can, they can test the hilsha in their, uh, they can test the hilsha and say, okay, this is the fish we have for ages. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nasser. Uh, may I request you to stop your uh, video? Uh, Okay. Yes. Thank you uh, for your nice presentation. Whenever we talk about Hilsha, uh, I can see there are two aspects about Hilsha. One is, is the biological aspect and another is the managemental aspect. So as a biologist, you have given a very good illustration of managemental aspect. And we learn many things from you about how to manage our Hilsha resources and how we are, we are gradually progressing, how we are gradually improving our condition. Uh, we are in, improving our stock. And now the floor is going to be open for discussion, open discussion. But before I open the floor, again, there are some housekeeping notice that please keep your uh, 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 mic uh, muted form, uh, muted and video stop. But whenever you want to talk, then you unmute please. We are very delighted that a good number ready. of uh, participants are here today. And I can see some of the very legendary person of our country, Professor Ainun Nisha Sar is with us. I'm very much, very, very excited to see him in this uh, webinar. Sir, would you please? Uh, uh, Salaam Alaikum, sir. Uh, Ainun Nisha Sar, are you available now, sir? Yes, I'm available, but let oh, me listen to some questions and then I will. Thank you, sir. We express our sincere gratitude and thanks to you. Anyway, the floor is now going to be open and it's a bilingual. If you feel comfort to speak Bengali, it doesn't matter. Whatever you feel comfort, you just proceed on. Uh, but again, uh, raise your hand. We will be giving you the floor. So uh, there are some notice as well. You know, the, uh, from Coastal Research Unit, CRU, we uh, organize such kind of seminars once in a month. So our next seminar is on 17th July, Saturday, on nature-based solution, that is NBS and our coastal ecosystem. And it will be delivered by Dr. Hasib M.D. Irfanullah. So you are welcome to that, uh, to our next uh, uh, webinar. 
And then again, uh, so, uh, Professor Ashish Kumar Paul is from Calcutta, from India, West Bengal. Uh, he has raised his hand. So, Professor Paul, uh, just before you start, I'm just on request. Uh, as I said, that we are very honored and we are very delighted to see a Professor Ainunisha sir with us. So, I'm giving the floor to Professor Ainunisha sir for so just to address us and say something, sir. Then, Professor, uh, there's Professor uh, Ashish Kumar Paul. Sir, Ainunisha sir. Thank you very much. Um, I have the privilege of knowing the research work of. Um, I have managed to work for IUCA and later on also. And I had the privilege of being present in a number of workshops which was organized for West Bengal researchers in Bangladesh. And I am I'm, I'm not a biologist, I'm an engineer. And I would admit, first thing I learned from Niamul Nasser is that there are three types of Hilsha found in Bangladesh and none of them are Hilsha Hilsha. And now when I talk to policymakers, senior secretaries, bureaucrats, when I take class at uh, PATC for the additional secretaries and joint secretaries, I always ask them what is the uh, scientific name of Ilish and all of them fail because they say Hilsha Ilisha. I'm making this point to tell you how little we know about the Hilsha fish. I will not take much time, rather I have one question for Niamul Nasser. Now we have this 65 days of uh, not to catch Hilsha in the Bay of Bengal. And my understanding from newspaper, I may not be correct. Yeah, my question is, I have read in newspaper, which may not be correct, is that in West Bengal or on the Indian side, the ban on catching fish from in the Bay of Bengal does not match with our dates. I think there is much lower number of dates. So there should be a common ban on catching fish in the Bay of Bengal to protect the marine fish as well as the hilsha that uh, grows over there. So this question number one and number two is, again, the ban on catching fish at the initial dates had been changed. Now it is linked with the full moon in the month of Ashin or certain dates. So could you please throw some light how these dates were not to catch fish inside Bangladesh as well as in the Bay of Bengal are determined and how to make these dates more effective and productive. Thank you very much. Niamunna, sir, uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, would you like to reply individuals or like to take the notes and... No, I, 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 I'll, I'll reply right now, inshallah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, thank you. Uh, the thing is, uh, Hilsha easily breed uh, throughout the year. Actually, whatever, because it, it lives in the sea. Whenever the, a group of fish or an individual, they get mature, they wanted to, they get the egg. Then they start to migrate toward the freshwater fish, fresh water to, to breed. But you are totally right that in the Ashin, that the Purnima, big Purnima and Ashin, that we found that the maximum of Hilsha, they migrate towards the river system to breed. One thing that is very interesting that the Bengali month or the, uh, the lunar month is much more uh, fit more efficiently than the Gregorian calendar, than the English calendar. So the mismatch between the, uh, it started at the same time when we, when the both plans are, we started with India. But in Indian West Bengal, they are following the English calendar. And we are following the Bengali calendar every year. And then the distance was created. So we are doing it in a two different time. So if the West Bengal, they try to manage it for the Hilsha, they should also follow the, the moonar, uh, moon uh, calendar, like uh, the, the Bengali calendar to uh, help uh, to manage the Hilsha in, in the Bhagirati river system rather than 
the English one. So your second part of the question is 65 days. So it, it, it's, it's a big band of trio. It, it's a big banding of some fish that there, there's a huge number of fish in the Bay of Bengal. They breed in different times. Some breed in the, in the winter, some breed in, the, in, in this rainy season, some breed in the pre-rainy pre season, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the way we see their egg in, in the fish when we catch them year round. But majority of fish that are expected to breed in, especially the commercial fish, the breed within the 65 days of my year. But again, there's a question to come up whether we have to adjust it or not. That kind of research is going on right now. Which one we have to go a little adjust it a little bit forward or a little bit backward to uh, match with the maximum commercial fish to breed and and to survive in future. So that's my answer, sir. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much for Thank this. you. Uh, now, Professor Ashish Kumar Paul from West Bengal. Professor Paul. Professor Paul, please uh, unmute yourself and. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes. Hello. Myself uh, yes. is Professor Paul. Uh -huh. Actually, working on coastal geomorphology and coastal environment in West Bengal and in India, I have a query. I have a query about the hills. That recently we have seen that the high SST, the sea surface temperature in the northern part of the Bay of Bengal in the month of April and May, and then the high concentrations or the landfall of the cyclones are taking place in the northern uh, coastal fringes. So I, my question is that, is there any positive or negative impact of such phenomenon which are actually taking place in the northern part of the Bay of Bengal? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ashish. I'm not a geophysicist, but the, my understanding that Hilsha, during my work with this for the multipurpose piece one, uh, what we see, the fish migrate either, uh, the Hilsha is only migrate either in the night time or uh, with the high sediment load water. So in, in a broad sense, we think we found that, okay, let the flood water come and let it is in the July or June, then the fish start to migrate more uh, to this water. But I, I would think of on that way, that if the sediment water uh, is, is sediment of the water is higher, then maybe then I expect that the hillshire will be high, uh, the number of hillshire will be higher in that water. And the temperature is a very important issue for the hatching of the fish. So a little bit of extra temperature, I, I, there need to be a research that whether it will accelerate their, their uh, larval stage, uh, that their emerging of larva from the egg, but the survival of the larva is the question that how how they could survive with a quick uh, you know uh, hatch out from the egg so that that is the question needed to be looked into thank, thank you. you possibly kunal kumar dash do you ask to any question or any 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 comments uh, then mahmuda aziz uh, Please raise your hand. The best way is to raise your hand. So uh, I, I, Mahmoud Ajiz, I have seen your question. So maybe I can answer her question. Yes, then. Uh, uh, maybe I can answer her question. Please. Uh, there, there is not much, there is no work was done uh, on the plastic pollution at Hilsha. It's, it's an important issue because the nursing ground uh, for Jatka is now more or less contaminated with uh, plastic, uh, plastics and plastic product uh, uh, in, in the coastal area. So uh, it needs to be uh, looked into. The research is needed to look into the plastic pollution versus the survival of 
uh, larval, larval fish in, in, the, in the coastal area or coastal nursing ground. Thank you. Mr. Anwar Zaman, it came Anwar Zaman. Please, please unmute yourself. Show me some, sir. Yes. Hello. Uh, Professor Anwarud Jaman is from West uh, Bengal, yeah. I think. Aliyah yeah. University of West Bengal, yes, please. Uh, may I speak out now? Yes, please. Please. Uh, you can open okay. your camera if you wish. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. 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 Please. Uh, sir, uh, myself, Anwar Uzama from southern part of Malda district. Actually, my village is just on the bank of river uh, Ganga or Padma, whatever you say, the junction point or the point from where we uh, usually say Padma river. I am having a lot of memories of uh, uh, Hilsa fish uh, during my childhood days when I was uh, in my village. My question is, uh, what we know that beyond Farakka Barrage, upstream of Farakka Barrage, after construction of, uh, construction of Farakka Barrage, we do not get fish. That means the construction of Farakka Barrage has curtailed or has restricted the uh, breeding ground for Hilsha. Now, is it possible somehow, or is there any initiative that the, uh, 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 the breeding ground for Hilsa can be extended even beyond uh, uh, Farakka Barrage so that the uh, production might be a little higher? Uh, uh, technically, I don't know whether it is possible or not, but then the people who are involved in research, they might be uh, in a position to tell us. And is there any initiative to take up the issue with the uh, government of India so that there can be uh, construction of some kind of safe corridor so that the Ilisca, uh, Ilsa can migrate beyond even Farakka Barrage? So if you can please uh, enlighten us. Uh, I think uh, my respected sir, Professor Anir Nishat can talk about it. Sir, can you comment? Uh, okay. Uh, 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 Professor Anwar Zaman, uh, actually you raise a very important question that I actually that I am looking for. You know that to improve it's not the small amount of fish to improve the the, the to improve or to uh, you know that to increase the production of hilsha. It need, uh, we need to have more space for the, the fish. So in a very basic understanding, if the fish can migrate beyond the Faraka, then the spawning ground can be uh, established, re-established. And it was there before because the, from the record, from the oldest record, from the, uh, uh, all this document it shows the fish migrates even in the Allahabad, uh, in, in the Jomuna River, towards the very much upstream to the Allahabad. So that can be possible when uh, the the water or the connectivity of the hills of migration is okay. So we expect that in future the connectivity can be created and the fish happily migrate very upstream to, to the very extremities that, that your place or even in the very upstream to Allahabad to, to uh, give the delicacy to the people and to reestablish men, to establish the breeding ground uh, for them, uh, for the fish uh, in the very upstream as it was before. Thank you for the good question. Thank you. Uh, there are a number of people who have raised their hands. Eventually, I will give them uh, the opportunity. But before that, I, I can see one very senior professor from India, Professor Kunal Kumar Dash, and who is also the supervisor of my student, Professor. Uh, uh, so I'm just requesting uh, Kunal Kumar Dash uh, would you please share something with us? Yes. Uh, sorry, I uh, I joined late. Uh, 
please open your uh, uh, video, sir, please. It is, it is already, the video is off from your side, you know, most is. Uh, uh, so. From my side, I'm not able to do that. Okay. I cannot. Okay, no, it's, it's fine. fine. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everybody. My, uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very new to this particular subject. But uh, I wanted to know one thing that, uh, that each, we know that the, the Elish is one of a very important uh, fish in our dietary. And then uh, I want to know that is there any international convention which regulates the fish catch? in uh, some in marine areas uh, so that uh, we can go on uh, uh, getting more fish in the year to come so is there any convention like that so which can regulate that that is my question no no dr Cornell, uh, there's no international convention on that so the fish is still uh, it, it's in the sea and we're fishing it there's no, no convention, international convention, to protect it in the open sea, no. Okay. So one more thing I wanted to ask, uh, and uh, very much uh, my, uh, my question is that, can we do certain kinds of predictive modeling using geographic information system, okay? Uh, so that we can plan our future catch also, for sustainable use. Is there anything we can do for, for years to come, you know, that we can do some uh, predictive modeling, the fish is there and we should not catch it right now, but we have, we have to we have to utilize those things after say one year, two years like that in the marine areas. Is there anything we can do like that using a predictive modeling technique? Yeah, that can be done. That can be done, that needed to be done, you know. Because uh, I think that part of work is still lacking in uh, from the Bay of Bengal that needed to be done, and I I don't know uh, why the scientists they are not working on it because uh, that, that is very important, especially the staff and the planning yeah. and have and putting uh, and getting some model to predict their their nature their movement at present we are doing some work on uh, on a genetic level that how what is there what kind of gene is expressed out in which level and what but uh, your uh, your suggestion is very important that kind of moral predicting model needed to be done to to understand you know the behavior of the fish uh, in terms of the conservation Okay. Uh, um, unfortunately, the electricity from my side is uh, gone, so I am now connected to my mobile phone. So may I request uh, uh, Abdullah Harun just to ask your uh, question or your comments? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Shoyal Samsar. And first of all, I would like to thank the uh, um, Coastal Research Unit, unit and also Professor Namul Nasser uh, to give us the idea about the uh, different components of the our national fish. So my, I have just two queries uh, to Professor Namul Nasser. First of one is that he mentioned the genetical drift is the one of a major problem maybe for Hilcha. So my question is that there is a, a pollution of the river systems are increasing in uh, different locations of Bangladesh. Uh, due to untreated uh, polluted materials or influence discharges in the river systems. If there is any possibility uh, uh, due to the pollution of the genetical drift, uh, there is any relationship, have you any idea about that? This is the first query. And second one is that I have seen in last year, uh, that means the 2020, end of the February and first week of the March, Besides the St. Martin Islands, so there is a deep sea areas. The fishermen harvested a large amount of the uh, hilcha fishes. There are some fishes also contains the eggs. Similarly, also during the uh, end of the winter season, 
I have seen also uh, the fishes which are uh, harvesting besides the Chormontas or Chorkajol, Chorbishas, that is besides the Tetulia, which is one of the major channel of the uh, Hilsha Elisha and besides the Rabnabar channel. But my question is that actually which dated uh, we mentioned that there is a breeding season or brood fishes. It is mandatory or there is any exceptional cases for uh, uh, mother fish which contains the eggs actually. This is my second question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah Bhai. Uh, uh, I'm coming, I'm, going, I'm starting from the second one towards the first one. Second one is, Hesha is a breed all over the year. And very interestingly, you can find Hilsha with egg in the sea, but they don't breed. They, they get matured and then with the, uh, with the hormonal cues, when it, the hormonal change is happening, they start to migrate towards the fresh water. And you obviously are right in, in the winter, that was the second peak they have. You know, there's two peaks. One is in the Ashin, and for, you know, there's the, the Bhara Purnima of Ashin, that's the one. Uh, and then the second peak is in, in the sea, uh, in the one. So you, you are right, that is the one. But for the management aspect, to give the less trouble to the fisherman, uh, you know, it just only one season is blocked for 21 days. That means at least 22 days, uh, you know, for brood fish conservation. So that's the first answer. Uh, uh, that's the answer of your second question. The genetical drift is uh, is in the other sense. The sense is the whole genome. There's a very little difference in the whole genome because they are the same population. The spawning from year after year, ages after ages. So they don't mix up with any other new one. So that is actually a big concern. It's like, a, uh, uh, like a, uh, I, I have a, quickly I have one thing in my mind. Uh, it's, it's a cheetah in Africa. You know that the number of cheetah is very less and there are very big differences in, there is very less difference in the genetic constant in Africa. So any disease shows up, the whole population will be in a state in terms of, you know, conservation. So in the same way, in a broad sense, because the research just came out two weeks back, you know, in the scientific notes in, in, the, in the Nature Journal. So that is a very interesting thing that, that is shown up, that if anything happened, any disease or any catastrophe in the genetic uh, contents, uh, the, the, the huge number of population will be in trouble. So that's another issue that needed to be tackled. So that's kind of drift that I, I would think uh, I, I'd like to, you know, say. Uh, no, no, then, I, I just okay. would like to uh, know that there is a pollution has any relation with this issue or not? I just would like to know. Is no, no, it's not. Uh, no, pollution is. has a different issue. We don't know about it. Uh, that's the uh, usually pollution has a problem with imposex. That's the, the change the sex of fish. But Hilsha has a different way of genetical change of sex. You know that the larger the larger the Hilsha, they become female. You know, not the younger one. But pollution would be an issue, especially for the babies, the nursing, the jatka. You know, the pollution. I see. The problem of pollution is, is in the nursing ground. So that's the big issue. So we, we try to save huge number of, uh, of uh, jatka uh, by banning them, uh, not eating them, uh, saving them from the mortality. But the pollution easily takes its way to uh, and making trouble the survival of the fish. Yes, so thank you. Okay. Uh... Then uh, Dr. Rahman from Just, please. Uh, thank you very much. Dr. Rahman from Joshua uh, uh, yes, University sir. of Science and Technology, I suppose. Yes, yes sir. Uh, hello, I am from Joshua uh, University of Science and Technology. I would like to thank Professor Nasser for such an informative presentation. Uh, my question actually repeats some part of the uh, question that Dr. Anunisha sir asked. So uh, my first question is, I just want to know, are there 
at the hill fish migrations maximum during the same time in all the rivers in Bangladesh. Is it the same uh, uh, a pattern we, we are observing? Uh, so my second question, uh, maybe I want to know that are there any research on the effects of environmental factors on the Hilsha fish migration? I, uh, I, I mean, I want to know whether there are any coincidence between the same months, I would say, uh, a full moon of Ashin and other environmental factors, I would like maybe water qualities, water velocities, uh, nutrient supply, also as well as the meteorological factors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rahman. You, you gave a very good uh, design for a research. This kind of research uh, actually not done yet. You know, this needed to be done. So what happened that we have very little experience on that. That water, uh, the first, the relationship with the lunar cycle is evident. So that's the one point. Second is the water flow. That is very important. Third, that I found in the polar region while I was working is the temperature, water temperature. Because that is also another cue for the fish to, to maybe to uh, understand that, okay, now this is the right time to breed uh, and so and so. And then uh, uh, obviously for migration, that's another question is the water velocity is important. So, uh, as well as the water depth. We found that uh, during my work, because I started to work uh, in 2010 on the migration way, uh, migration pathways. And in one year, there is a more water. So, most of the majority of the fish goes towards the Jamuna, and then they took the other river uh, down to go back to the uh, to the to the uh, uh, Padda uh, on the other way, so that's kind of thing. Because they usually, I thought that they usually year after year they usually go towards the Padda River. No, not that. They usually follow the water level in the river. Either usually the water level uh, flow is higher in the in the river uh, Padda during the migration time than. Jomuna. So that's the way they usually follow the, that way. But more research needed to be done. I didn't get a chance to do this kind of research or I couldn't get the fund to go back and check this kind of thing over there. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, in that case, I, I think a combination of uh, assessing lunar cycle as well as the uh, climatological or environmental factors, it could aid us to uh, zoning, the banning of the fishing uh, that can reduce the pressure to the fishermen. Suppose we can have a, a fishing ban in some areas, some part of the time, and other 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 areas some other time. So we can have alternatives. Thank you very much. That is a very good question because uh, yeah, there are lots of things that could become you know that for. For your question and answer, actually, last week we have a meeting with uh, with the carp conservation. And if you think about the climatic situation, the first rain started in the uh, in, in the Halda area. You know, when the Halda, you can you can you can see in the paper, okay, Halda re uh, breeds, uh, Katla breeds, because the rain started over there, and then you can see the later on is in the in the brahmaputra and then the jamuna you know so the river the the rainfall is started from that part towards the other part you know that the kurigram region and then it moves towards the rashe region or jamuna to to initiate the breeding uh, of the carp so that kind of issue you know uh, we can easily predict, uh, we, we, we shouldn't easily predict, but we can work out for fish for uh, ecosystem-based, you know, analysis and for ecosystem-based century or, you know, uh, to conserve the fish, to give less stress to the fishermen in a particular area. So that, that could be another smart move, 
maybe in, in near future. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Dr. Shohidul Islam, sir, are you there, sir? Maybe he just cut out. Uh, maybe um, uh, Mr. Al Mamun, uh, Professor Al Mamun, would you please? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I am really delighted to be a part of today's session, uh, especially thanks to the today's organizer and special thanks to Dr. Niamun Nasser, sir. Uh, sir, I am Abdullah Al Mamun. Uh, basically, I am belongs to the Department of Fisheries, Bangladesh. I am working as the Assistant Director of Department of Fisheries. Uh, uh, right now, I am a student of uh, PhD student, Ocean University of China. Okay. Uh, I am, sir, uh, I'm working on the stock assessment of uh, commercially important marine fisheries of Bangladesh uh, from Bay of Bengal. Uh, so, sir, uh, I, I just not questions. I'm really delighted uh, today's session, uh, for today's session. I would like to give some observation, if you kindly allow just for me one minute, just happy minutes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I had a just uh, uh, opportunity to work with the Department of Fisheries for the last seven years. Uh, I worked with the, our National Research uh, Survey and Research Vessel, R.B. Min Shondani. Uh, I was also involved with the, our uh, Dr. Fitzjob Nansen, you know, sir, uh, the, yes. our UN vessel. I was the regional cruise leader that time on behalf of the Bangladesh government. Sir, from the uh, just short experience from the marine fisheries sector working for the last seven years, uh, just uh, I am very, I am really agree with all of your proposal that you have already presented uh, through this today's presentation. Uh, my observation is that, sir, uh, when I was in Department of Fisheries, I was a manager. Right now, I am working as a scientist in as a PhD student. So uh, we have uh, many uh, drawbacks, sir, in our country's policy making or in scientists scientific aspect. So my proposal is in future to manage the fishery, especially the hillshire fishery, as it is the last sector of our country. Uh, so we have to go many, many ways, sir, uh, uh, from the scientific aspect and the management aspect. Uh, so in future, if we get, uh, if we can work together, that would be a good opportunity for our country. Uh, sir, my question, one question that is the uh, when, uh, so far as I uh, understand, I, I have knowledge that there is many research on the Hilsha on riverine area, that is inland Hilsha management. But uh, in the open water, if you go to the ocean fishery management, or uh, there is a very little study so far as I know. So you, do you have any planning in future, sir, or uh, do you team to work on the, especially the Hilsha ground or Hilsha, uh, uh, that is the region, uh, uh, geographically distribution of the Hilsha for ma better management from the industrial and artisanal sector of the marine fisheries. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Al Mamun, that uh, for your generous offer. You know, <laughs> I I feel uh, you know working in this field for uh, for some time. I wouldn't say very long time, uh, but my experience sometimes I I disheartened to see that how mismanagement is happening everywhere, you know. But uh, obviously, the, I didn't get any chance to work in the sea, you know. Uh, and even very, and I don't know, it's a, maybe some allergic thing or something. So I, could, I couldn't contribute there. But what I did, actually now I got another good biodiversity project with the government. I'm still scanning 710 kilometer of the coastal line to see the artisanal catch and, and so and so, you know. But 